Aloha and welcome to Restaurants Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. I am your host, Cheryl Matsuoka, the Executive Director of Hawaii Restaurant Association. Today, I would like to have my guests introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about themselves and the company that they represent. So I'm just going to go according to my screen. So I'm going to have first Tony, if you don't mind introducing yourself and sharing a little bit about the company you represent. Sure. Well, thanks, Cheryl. First off, we appreciate the time to, uh, to uh, present to everybody and answer some questions. Uh, I'm actually the founder and president of Pop Menu. We are essentially the only all-in-one platform for restaurants in the United States. And um, we put an extreme focus on the menu. We make that interactive. And by doing so, it really opens up a world of opportunities for restaurants. I think it's the catalyst for everything in terms of improving your digital footprint. So we're excited to spend time with you. And more importantly, I'd like Kristen, who's there locally and a, a key member of our team, that she's there to service you. So I'd love for her to introduce herself. Yes, Kristen, please introduce yourself. Aloha, and thank you, Cheryl, for having us on this morning. Um, I'd like to say thank you to everybody for watching Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Kristen Montero. I am based in Manoa. I've been in the tech space for, I'd say, about seven years. And I've been consulting, helping companies scale for the last 10 years. Um, with Pop Menu, I'm really here to really help a lot of mom and pops, aunties and uncles become more sustainable in their business, be able to weed out the middlemen and take back control of their business and power so they can drive more customers through their door. So thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. And Stephanie, why don't you introduce yourself and then introduce Scott? Absolutely. Hi, everyone. I'm Stephanie Rodriguez. I work for Spot On locally. I'm the account executive. So thank you, uh, Cheryl, for having us and having Spot On be a part of this incredible industry of technology for our restaurant tour. So I appreciate it. I have here Scott Euclidus. Scott? Hi, everyone. Uh, Scott Euclidus, uh, Spot On. I'm the restaurant turn residence. Um, spent 30 years in the restaurant business, uh, chef owner of four restaurants. Uh, in San Francisco, that's where I'm based now. I'm um, working with Spot On for a year and a half and for an uh, end-to-end -end solution for, um, uh, for all restaurants of any size from SMB to mid-market to enterprise. So glad to be with you all today and thanks for the opportunity to speak to you. Thank you. So everyone knows who's listening right now, all of our members and subscribers, the pandemic and the employee shortage has changed and even forced the way the food and beverage industry looked at their traditional ways of doing business. So many restaurants have adapted a new reality to include more contactless technology and innovative digital solutions. Technology and innovation helped save many restaurants during this past pandemic. So as we transform how we operate, not just to survive, but to thrive in this new era, from going from online ordering to self checkouts, touchless payments, the food and beverage industry can no longer afford to ignore the trends that are helping businesses reinvent themselves to remain relevant and competitive. So today, the conversation is all about the digital innovative ways that restaurants have implemented these two um, companies. So let's start off with Tony. So. How does your company increase a restaurant's foot traffic? Sure. Well, I think the I think the first thing is simplifying the tech stack. You know, too many restaurants have to manage six, eight, ten different tools or contractors, and that becomes very hard, especially when they don't talk to each other. That limits basically your ability to optimize foot traffic. Um, the most obvious answer is making sure that your website is optimized for Google. It is by far the number one way that people uh, search and connect with restaurants. Well over 90% typically will find a restaurant through Google and or direct. Um, and then I think the second thing, the most obvious, and the way you do that is making sure that you have a site that has quality information that you can index. The more information they can pull, such as individual dish items, will drastically improve the amount of free traffic you get. I think the second thing is you have to know your guests. I mean, it sounds so obvious. People have been saying it for years. And there's no better opportunity to know your guests than how they're interacting with your menu. It's the primary decision point for every guest, both new and returning. If you have a static menu experience, meaning a PDF or a static menu, I don't know the things that Scott loves. I don't know that Kristen is vegetarian or the things that are Stephanie's uh, that she wants to try. 
knowing those things and then putting them into a remarketing engine will drastically improve not just your ability to capture people the first time, but how do you get them to come back more frequently? And I think that's a big area of opportunity for every restaurant in the country. It's so true. So um, why don't we go ahead then and have maybe, Scott, you want to take that one? How does your company increase a restaurant's foot traffic? Yeah, I mean it's similar. I think um, you know Tony. Tony, you know, nailed it. I think a lot of people are online. Every, you know, the, the business has changed so much, um, and everyone's online searching for you know where's their next meal, what's their next experience. And I think you know we have a lot of the same ideas where we're, we're trying to find help our help our customers and help restaurants. You know, just find find the people and let them know where they're at and what they do and best way to kind of tell their story and maybe di and restaurants differentiate themselves from maybe their competitors. I'm gonna. In San Francisco, with a very dense, uh, more restaurants per capita than almost any city. So, how do you really attract them and get them to come in? And I think that's half the battle. But you know, but then again, to, to continue on Tony's point, is once they're there, you really need to find a way to, you know, meet them where they're at. One, one, you know, what are the things that they like? Ex enhance that experience, whether it's from, you know, with th our products like ours with uh, the integrated reserve, uh, we call it spot on reserve. It's a waitlist reservation system that's integrated into the point of sale. So the moment those folks come into the door and the host seats them, servers are already seeing all the guest diners, um, their notes and the experience that they've had prior to them. And maybe it's a VIP or it's a, a birthday. The servers can, you know, and bartenders can treat them in a certain way and make sure elevating that that experience. So, and then obviously with with those great experience they have, they're gonna you're really ensuring they're gonna come back. You know, and make it a regular spot for them. Great. So, so Kristen, you have any examples of how you were able to increase a restaurant's foot traffic? Yeah. So, not only do we utilize our dynamic menu, which is the patented software technology, but we really drive and increase their traffic by really utilizing these remarketing tools. Right. We we all built a restaurant not to simply just get caught up in the hospitality but really to provide delicious food. And when we want to focus on that, it takes away from other places like marketing. So being able to nurture your customers in their full funnel, so you're driving them back through the door. Um, we have something called smart messaging, which really allows you to be hands off, be in the kitchen, do your thing, chef it up. And at the same time, our software is doing the legwork for you. And it's, it's an employee that you can count is going to show up if they're not going to call off and it really tracks i mean all that data so you don't need to go in and find out okay it's this customer's birthday or they didn't leave a review yet and they ordered with us two weeks ago these are things that we want to automate to really encourage customers to come back so we center everything around the brand for our customers and our clients and that way the customers know it's your restaurant, it's your Giovanni Pastrami that they're going back to, it's your Kihei Cafe that they're going back to. Nice, nice. So Stephanie, you have any examples of how you were able to increase uh, restaurants foot traffic? Absolutely, and adding to uh, what Scott said and Kristen, um, the marketing tools, right? We wanna make sure that we're targeting our customers and making sure that they're aware of Maybe the restaurateurs have a deal going on this week and we, you get it through the email, as the text messages and coming back for that. And I also want to add on little tools like loyalty programs. Who doesn't love a loyalty program, right? You're at home thinking, I want to go back to my local restaurant, my favorite local restaurant, and you get a notification. Hey, you get 10% off because you visited how many such times. So a loyalty program, making sure that every time a customer comes into the restaurant they have a smooth experience from the beginning from reservations to dining in to qr codes and at the end of the day i think it's all about that and understanding um your customers i love it i love it and you know one of the things we always talk about is when you have that opportunity and a patron is sitting at the table how do we increase that average check size how do we how do we increase their experience so Hey Scott, why don't you go ahead and take that one? I can I can tell you firsthand. I being a restaurant owner myself for many years, that was always like that was the thing. You know, how do we turn? How do we get more butts and seats? How do we? And then once we get them, how do we turn them? Um, you know, and I think with enhanced, you know, going to a cloud-based system and having 
uh, being able to have that reporting and data to know where, when, and when, and how often, and who is eating your place, and being able to, you know, uh, staff properly, and do all these things that it takes to make sure that you are you're you're in tune with your restaurant, knowing where you're at, um, knowing knowing the flows, uh, the nat naturally or even just within historically speaking, because you're looking back. So um, I think those are all really important to it. And then other um, and device like a device like the handheld, right? We're taking table side payments, we're taking table side orders, really speeding up the service, getting, I mean, people come in after a hard day of work, if, you know, whether they're working at home or they're working in the office, wherever they're at, you know, they're ready, they're hungry, they want to eat. So let's get them those drinks, let's get them those food as fast as possible, which really speeds up that time and making sure that we're getting more people through those doors. Absolutely. And increasing that average check size. That's awesome. Yeah. Yep. So Tony, any comments on how yep. you're able to increase that average check size? Yeah, again, you know, Pop Menu started out, we built everything around the menu experience because again, it's the primary decision point. And if you think about your restaurant today, if you have a PDF or a static menu experience, how are you able to influence the purchase pattern by highlighting your high profit items or signature dishes? Um, how are you able to tailor things towards their vegan customers? Um, restaurants don't typically do that. And so you wait until someone gets on the on premise or you hope through the online that they just choose that. One of the ways you can drastically change that is adding one visual content to your menu, specifically to individual dish items. Because what happens is Scott can see that even before he arrives, he sees a great visual of grilled octopus and he sees that 214 people love it. Well, he's thinking it must, it looks great. A lot of people love it. He's already thinking about he's going to try it by the time he arrives there. So, you know, on our platform, Pop Menu, there's a couple of great sites you can check out. HamptonSocial.com is one. Trachatoria Sophia is another one in Texas. But on our platform, the menu items that are featured and have a visual attached to it have a 303% greater engagement rate, meaning people clicking on it, interacting with it, sharing it to social or text, ordering, et cetera. It is a 202% greater order rate. So that clearly shows you that if you have a dynamic menu experience, you can influence behavior much more than you ever thought possible. The challenge is for many restaurants is there's not a lot of technology out there that allows that to happen. And if it, and if it does part of it, it often is expensive. I think what we've done is really simplify that and the proof is in the pudding. So with the pop menu, we actually give free websites, email, social, all those things as part of our platform, because we want people to understand that changing the menu experience allows you to influence the guest check, not just today, but in the future, and allows you to pick up all those valuable insights. But adding visuals, allowing people to interact with it clearly has a direct correlation between driving up the average guest check, because you can steer people to what is valuable to you. Love it, I love it, thank you. So do you wanna make any comments, Kristen, on that? Yeah, I um, actually want to add with our menu and how we really drive even more purchasing while they're sitting at the table is when they're looking at the menu, there's reviews of that specific item on that menu that they're looking at. On top of that, say they're waiting and they're just waiting on the wait list. They're going to get the menu so that by the time they sit down, they already know what to order. And now you're even getting a higher turnover rate when it comes to your tables. So you can fit in more customers and increase your revenue for that evening. Um, I've also had one client who specifically um, pushes out a secret menu when people come to dine in. That way people can see and know that there is a secret menu. So it's not so secret, but it gives that real experience of exclusivity and that easeability to really just visually see nice imagery descriptions that social validation that we're all looking for going to other third-party platforms to find these things and it's all centered around the menu i love that secret menu stephanie anything you want to add of an experience where you were able to help a restaurant increase their um tab Absolutely. And not only increasing, but moving tables faster, right? We want to make sure that those tables are turning quicker. So, uh, which I'm really excited to talk about this is our new QR code um, dining uh, feature. So, employees are busy, servers are busy running around. So, instead of waiting for the server to order, 
our customers, our clients are able to uh, scan a QR code from their phone and order through the phone. So they don't have to wait for that server to come to the table or take that order. So we're kind of helping um, the servers, bartenders to kind of speed up a little bit and, and have a little bit help. And just recently we launched, you know, Hawaii family style, yeah. <laughs> so when you have that group of five to 10 people, you can still order through that phone and just flip the check through that mobile app that we provide. So what are we doing? We're moving faster, we're getting more people in. And that's something that a lot of my clients are just not only mind blown, but they're loving it <laughs> because it's definitely helping them see and accepting more, um, more customers in the door. So that's something that I wanted to add. And I think it's something that is exciting that we're even uh, at this level, right, with technology. Love it, thank you so much. All right, I'm gonna give everybody an opportunity to say one last, because before we close, you know, one last key point, maybe I didn't ask the right question, maybe there's something that's new that has not been discussed already. So do you wanna go ahead and take that one, Tony? Anything that I missed? No, I think you did it. Look, I think every business owner in the country, right, whether in restaurants or in other businesses, you're always looking to do one of three things. One, how do I drive more customers, more revenue with less expenses, with less time invested, et cetera. If I can't do that, I need to figure out how to get more out of my current expenditures in my, my current team. I think technology, I think people have overcharged restaurants for decades on, again, on a series of tools that we know aren't gonna optimize things. It's one of the key reasons why we, we've included so many things in the platform. Um, I just think no matter what you do, Remember that design technology itself does not have to be expensive or take a long time to be great. There's this, I think about the restaurant space and there's this pie. And on the back half, you have POS and inventory, you know, companies like Spot On, for example, companies like Toast that do those things really well and then are, sta and are dabbling in other things. This other piece of the pie, I would argue, you know, obviously is more important in our, in our, in our eyes, meaning how do you attract people? Meaning how do you drive more people to you how do you have a unique user experience so more of them convert into the transaction path? And then how do you learn about them so that your remarketing is really tailored to Chris and is really tailored to Scott's preferences, which ultimately give him a much better chance at coming back to you a lot more frequently, 10 times a year versus three. So what I would just suggest for everybody is focus on the things that are the most impactful to you and then build from there. The menu experience by far, without a shadow of a doubt, is the most important thing to your success online. That along with your Google exposure. You master those two things, you're already drastically better. And then you can really start getting into social and all those other things for a really well-rounded solution. But I shared a couple of examples in the chat. I'm not sure how it came about. If it helps people visually to understand what I'm talking about, play around on some of those. And uh, yeah, anyway, hope that helps a little bit. Thank you, Tony. So, okay, so Kristen, you want to go ahead and add before we have to close this show? Is there anything that we missed or something you have a, a burning desire to talk about? Yeah, so um, I just want to say one thank you, Cheryl, and thank you, Think Tech Hawaii, for having us on. Uh, definitely when it comes to technology, right, especially out here in Hawaii, um, we have some aunties and uncles that are less tech savvy, and then we also have some of the other restaurants that are way more tech savvy, and you have a different clientele, like UH or something like that. Either way, technology is the way to move forward and survive in our industry today. And at Pop Menu, we have made it simple enough because our software is a software built by restaurant owners for restaurant owners. And so it is completely simplified for even your GMs to be able to go in and manage certain things or your social media person to be able to go in and post directly. We're fully integrated into a lot of different softwares for that seamless experience. And like Tony said, we're the only one in the industry today that is an all-in-one solution, fully integrated. Love it, thank you. So Stephanie, any closing remarks, anything that I missed, go for it. First of all, thank you again for having us and having the Spot On family here be part of this show. Um, I just wanna say how excited I am how open-minded restaurant tours are becoming. And let's talk about the mom and pop in Hawaii. I see it every day and I'm here for it. I'm here to show up in person, to help you um, and to guide you through our technology. Yeah, so thank you so much for having us and we're excited to continue growing locally. Thank you, Stephanie. Scott, anything that I missed? 
Uh, oh, this could, we could talk for hours. I'm just, no, I just know this for sure. I, I feel like we're all holding back, but that's all right. Um, no, I mean, to, you know, to, you know, maybe to wrap things up, I mean, we, we, you know, as a company, and I think we, and most companies in restaurant technology have really understood what, what, you know, what's needed and, and here to help. And I think we set ourselves apart really to, to make sure that our, you know, our customers are well taken care of and we have, you know, the top, you know, customers support and is there to help and people things are going to go wrong or not you have people like stephanie boots on the ground ready there to be there and help and make sure that you know everyone is taken care of and they're and whether things go right things go wrong you know and i think it plays to exactly this the, the the idea of reducing those vendors and making sure it's easier to you know one less person to 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 pay one and two to to call in case something goes wrong so you know that's it's it's been a it's been an interesting couple of years obviously and so we're hoping uh the next few years will be better with technology and with with people and um so yeah i think uh th and thank you for having us i pre appreciate your time very welcome and, and you're right scott and it, our rush our workforce has been very challenging and in hawaii everybody has right help wanted signs in every single location so technology has helped the many restaurants get through this. So in closing, you know, successful restaurants are expanding their digital footprint to stay in business. We know that these last two years have been very challenging. And even though we see a little uptick right now, it doesn't take away the two years where we had no revenue. So looking at a digital solution is a way that restaurants, you can stay in business. And that's my message to our restaurant members today. While restaurants are increasing the uh, technology, it's also realizing that there are other ways to look at even the employee shortage and how can I use technology in replacing that and increasing my profitability. Again, if you have any questions for today's speakers, reach out to me at hawaiirestaurant.org. Again, my name is Cheryl Matsuoka, the Executive Director of Hawaii Restaurant Association. And Hawaii Restaurant Association is the voice of Hawaii's food service and restaurant. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.